I, I, I got to make a call. Hello? Hey, Mom, it's your son, Tony, from Hack the Movies. Yeah? Uh, uh, question. Were other parents showing their young kids Silence of the Lambs uh, growing up? It's time to hack the movies. Today, we're talking about tapes with Tony and Johanna. Talking about tapes. Tony, what is that? It is the dog alien from Alien 3. I found it at Walmart. Wasn't it like a cow or an ox? No, Johanna, you're thinking of the uh, assembly cut of Alien 3. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, these two versions of Alien 3, just YouTube search Alien 3. But today, we're going to talk about Silence of the Lambs. A good movie. Yeah, a good movie. Thank you. A good movie produced by Dino De Laurentiis. <laughs> We we haven't really uh, we got lucky with Kong seventy six, which ended up being okay. Yeah, it's literally okay. But Dino De Laurentiis really let us down with the sequel. But here we are. One of his companies has failed, but he's made it back. It's fine. Uh, um, <laughs> we're back with the Silence of the Lambs, and now we are doing this because they are going to ruin Clarice with the new TV show. I'm so scared. Ooh, it's it's Alex Kurtzman producing. He's the guy who like ruin Transformers and everything. Mm, I think. Yeah. Whoever the producer of uh, Clarice is, is a producer I, don't, whatever. I hate. Uh, but, you know, people are looking, because the show, unlike Hannibal, which was like a reboot, the show is supposed to be a continuation of the Silence of the Lambs story. So let's go back and talk about Silence of the Lambs, written by Thomas Harris. Have you read the books? I got the uh, audio one from you. Did you read them? No, I listened to it. <laughs> well, did you listen to I it? I did. Okay. No, I did. I actually um, want to kind of go back and listen to it again because I feel like there's stuff that like I miss. I got sick last year and I just binged all four books and I finally got to read them for the first time. I love these movies. Oh, I love them too. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to do too much of a movie versus book on this. I'm going to bring it up when I think it really matters. There's only a few things. It's a really faithful adaptation. Yeah. It's actually kind of crazy Like, because I uh, mm. you know, obviously listened to the book or whatever and then I watched the movie last night again yeah like I've seen this movie a thousand times but I still yeah. wanted to watch again because refresher yeah and I'm just like wow this is actually really close to the book it's really close like, uh there are some big changes that don't ruin the movie there's just changes and I'll explain why as we get into it I'm surprised it's so close because Thomas Harris is famously very shy he's not a very public figure he had nothing to do with the movie oh wow he gave it their blessing I don't he said he didn't see the movies. I'm sure he did at some point when he stopped writing the books, but he's like, I I don't want to see someone else's interpretation of a character I created, uh, but I wish him all the best. But then he wrote the fourth movie, so I assume he saw the movies at some point. That's another reason I'm like, I'm shocked it's so faithful because he had nothing to do with it, but they kept it really, really close. Uh, so the opening of this movie, we meet Clarice Starling at the FBI Academy. And uh, I needed a woman in this episode because women love Clarice. Uh, a lot of women find her like real relatable because she's like. I feel like people in general can find her relatable. Yeah. But women in particular in the 90s. It I was mean, like a big yeah. deal in the 90s. I mean, it, it was a male dominated. Yeah. So it's, like, it's like, like a woman like working by herself pretty much to establish herself and make it in this world. And a lot of women relate to that. Not you. Uh, because you found your job because of me, you met your boyfriend because of me, and you have a little bit of internet fame because of me. But for independent women, they really, really love Clarice. And uh, throw something at your head. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Clarice is training, and she gets a call into Jack Crawford's office. And I really like this movie. Does good visual storytelling. Yeah, I was actually going to point that out because, yeah. like, obviously in the book, you get the internal monologue. Yeah. And you get to see more into like what she's dealing with. Yeah. But. The framing of the camera and stuff, whatever, especially it's like that male gaze. Oh, yeah. So, like, uh, it comes up in this scene. But, yeah, this movie kind of breaks. There are no rules in filmmaking. There's, yeah. The, there's stuff that you should probably do. Uh, but this movie kind of, Clarice is always looking half off the camera. Yep. And all the characters, not just the male ones, but most of them, are looking directly in the camera. It's to make you feel, like, uncomfortable. Yeah. It's, um, I, I love it. Yeah. But even before that, like, uh, she's in Jack Crawford's office by herself and she's looking at the board of all the murders. So you get the idea of, like, what's going yeah. on. So when they mention, oh, uh, is this about Buffalo Bill? 
And it's like, all right, I get who Buffalo Bill is because we just saw it. I'm connecting the pieces. Really good visual storytelling. It's so refreshing to talk about oh, a good movie by on the this way, show. By the way, uh, <laughs> the music is done by Howard Shore. Same yes. dude that does The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Slaps. Titanic, right? No, James Horner does Titanic. Oh, James Horner did Titanic. Yeah, but you won't let me on that episode, will you? Even though I know everything. The episode isn't shot yet. Who knows? Anyway, um, yeah, so Jack Crawford comes in, and now this is one of the biggest changes of the book. So the book is a sequel, yep. but the movie is not. However, there was a movie called Manhunter, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is actually pretty good. It's my, one of Michael Mann's first movies. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I don't think I have. It's it's really good. It's another thing where it's, it's really faithful to Red Dragon until the third act. They don't do like the twist ending or anything. It just ends in a big shootout. Okay. Um, which is kind of a letdown, but uh, it was a it was a very good movie. Bombed at the box office. Uh, completely just failed at the box office. I assume cult following now. Cult following now. Okay. Yes. If you ever wonder why Red Dragon is such a good movie, even though it's directed by Brett Ratner, it's because he basically just copied Michael Mann <laughs> and just did the right ending to the movie. I mean, <laughs> that movie was a failure, so they made a, si a decision to not reference it in this. Okay. But that changes the Jack Crawford character. It does a lot. A lot. So in this movie, before you read the book, what did you think of Jack Crawford in this movie? Like his relationship with Clarice? Seems like he's into her, right? A little into her, also a little misogynistic. It's. It, it's accidentally misogynist like he's not trying that's what he knows but yeah, he makes he, it's an not on purpose but like uh i know uh, later um when the yeah the they, police chief thing or whatever they, they he like, makes a comment and then he's talking in the yeah. car with her and she's like well i mean they're gonna follow your lead yeah and but i'm just like, like <laughs> it's like it's like someone who's kind of like they're not quite set in their ways but they're like oh what i've been doing is wrong how can i fix yeah. it yeah not like in my day it was <laughs> fine um but he changes in this so how he is in the movie, it seems like he's kind of into her and attracted to her. And he looks like a nice dressed guy. It's Scott yeah. Glenn from Daredevil. Because our fans probably watch stupid shit like Daredevil. I like Daredevil, but they probably only know Netflix him from Daredevil. Or yeah. Or he's yeah. Stick in Daredevil. Oh my God, he is. <laughs> yeah, Scott Glenn. He seems like he's into Clarice. Uh, she kind of likes him, we find out, because she has daddy issues. Um, yeah. However, in the book, he was very he was very depressed at this point because uh, the Red Dragon movie changes it. And we'll, yeah. we'll get the Red Dragon at some point. But in the book, Will Graham's face gets cut up by the Red Dragon. Uh, and you find out in the beginning of Silence of the Lambs, they're like, yeah, Will Graham is a drunk now. And it's like, oh, that's it's really depressing. So Jack Crawford has screwed up his previous protege who was in retire, almost got killed. Then he brought him out of retirement, almost got killed again. So Jack Crawford's like, oh, I fucked that one up. Uh, in the book, his wife is dying of yeah. cancer. So in the book, it's like he's trying to like get his mind. He's focusing on the case because of everything else going on. And he's trying to like build Clarice up as this next protege. But he's he's fearful because of what happened with Will. And th maybe there's like a hint that he's kind of attracted to her. But that's not the yeah, important and part. And also he doesn't dress as well. He does not dress as well in like, the book. Not at all. Um, so yeah, the movie totally changes that, and it changes the character Jack Crawford. But it's not. It a also is kind of like a weird, like I guess, unfoiling of like Clarice too. Yeah, it makes her daddy issues a little weirder. Yeah, yeah. It's because they hint at the romance, and I'm like, uh, I, I get in the book. She needs a strong male role model that's in an authority figure position. But now she's kind of into him. It's like a whole thing. But yeah. it doesn't ruin the movie. It's a no. change that doesn't hurt the movie. Um, yeah, so she gets told that she has to talk to Hannibal Lecter because they're trying to build a profile on Buffalo Bill. This turns out to be a lie to find out later. <laughs> and she has to go meet Hannibal the Cannibal. The psychiatrist Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal the Cannibal. Who is the best part of this movie, obviously. Uh, He's... <laughs> so charming. It's before, disgusting. <laughs> however, before we get to how charming he is, we have to deal with Dr. Chilton. I hate him so much. <laughs> that, and actor like, is, that actor is... I'm going to bring him up again at the end of talking about the movie and then compare it to the book ending because yeah. I, have some, I yeah. have some stuff to talk uh, about. <laughs> Dr. Chilton... And this actor is great. I, I've seen this actor in a lot of things. Uh, he is a creep, and he's so good at being a creep. You know what? A lot of people who are 
in this movie that are supposed to be like creepy yeah. really sell it. And I'm like, <laughs> really? oh my God. Whoever did the casting for this movie, you found, Bravo. The, you found you the go. perfect creeps. <laughs> like, hey, you know any creeps for this movie? Yeah, I know a lot of creeps. Yeah, I have a list. <laughs> they just picked every guy who's ever tried to hit on them. <laughs> yeah, this fucking actor will be in it. Uh, he's a creep. He's rude. He is misogynistic and not he's apologetic so about gross. it. Like, he's just like, Ooh. oh, hi, young FBI girl. You want to fuck? Like, he's yeah, like, you know, this town's pretty good if you have someone to show you the way. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then Baltimore could be quite fun. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, it's super great. Clarice is just like, yeah, sure. I just want to get out of here and yeah. do my thing. Um, so he takes her down to Lecter's dungeon. He keeps Lecter in the dungeon. We meet Barney who was in the other movies. He was actually one of the two actors from Manhunter that made it into this movie. Oh, nice. He played a different character. Okay. I think he played a cop in Manhunter, and I'll get to who the other actor is. Uh, he introduces, he brings her into the dungeon. We get to see way, some... Can we tell, uh, talk about how Clarice basically told uh, freaking... Um... Oh, my God. Chilton? Hold on. How do you say it? Dr. Chilton. Ch- Chilton? Chilton. Chilton. Okay, sorry. Can we talk about how like uh, Clarice tells Chitlin... Chitlin? <laughs> I'm leaving that in. No, I'm leaving in that setup. No. Can we talk about how Clarice basically tells Chelton to just fuck off? Pretty much, at yeah. The end? And he was just like, well, why did I come all the way down yeah, here? Yeah, you could have just told me. And she's like, oh, then I wouldn't have your charming number. Yeah. Like, like, um, oh, before, I know we, we keep building up to Hannibal, but we keep getting distracted. Uh, he shows her the picture of, like, the nurse that he, like. Yeah. Yes. Why does and- he carry that around? I think I don't think he carries around. I think all, he carries it around. I don't think he carries it around all the time. I think he just put it in his pocket for this time. I think he carries. Uh, it yeah, you find out that Hannibal one time faked chest pains, mm-hmm. and then the nurse leaned over, a bitter face, and there's and he usually can keep his heart rate at a. Yeah, certain... his, his heart never got above like a certain point. Um, and sometimes in movies they always say show don't tell, but sometimes it's more effective to tell and not show. And this is one of those times where it's like you're imagining it; it's pretty creepy. And then they show you it happening in Hannibal, and it kind of looks cartoony. Uh, so I just yeah. wanted to bring that up. Hannibal is another one we got to do at some point. <laughs> I'd like to do the show, too. Yeah, the show would be fun to do a little recap. Um, the show's fun. We finally meet Lecter after we meet uh, a bunch of other crazy people and multiple mates. Yeah, it's, it's actually really funny because you like have her walking down and she has no idea what like what she's going to expect there or whatever. Yeah. Like she's read stuff about him and everything. Yeah. And she's like read his papers and stuff like that. But then like she's walking down and there's like actual crazy people, yeah. but they're just behind bars. Yeah. And then you get her and then there's just the camera panning <laughs> to him and it's, you see the glass yeah. and he's just standing there all like prim and proper yes. like, hey. <laughs> uh, does this seem remind you of anything? No, Tony. No, this scene's been parodied I know. so many times. But you know what did it the best? Creepy doctor behind glass in a dungeon in a prison. Mummy Cop season one when we had Dr. Frankenstein behind the glass. What? <laughs> Mummy Cop. What's Mummy Cop? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Mummy <laughs> Cop, my old show. That's how much I love this when I did. You had an old show? Yes. Uh, Dr. Frankenstein, MD. We decided to basically make him Hannibal Lecter and we put him behind the glass. I, and I remember. <laughs> Uh, yes, Anthony Hopkins is ridiculously charming. <sighs> One change from the book. Every single live action version of Hannibal Lecter has omitted his sixth finger on his right hand. Yeah. Which isn't a problem for Red Dragon and Hannibal, or Red Dragon and Silence of the Lambs. It becomes a problem when they adapted Hannibal. Because that's but, how they ID him. Yeah, it, yeah, and then they figured out a way around it. It was so stupid. Yeah. But yes, they, they all got rid of his sixth, which is a weird thing anyway. It almost makes me feel like Thomas Harris was like real into James Bond movies where they all had to have like one little <laughs> physical quirk. <laughs> What was it? He had like an extra middle finger? No, no. I think it was like, a, I think it was just a p- pinky. Just yeah. Like an extra mm-hmm. finger. Um, that I think worked. I think it like was a functional finger. <laughs> Would this sure. movie have been better if Anthony Hopkins had a sixth finger? I wouldn't have paid attention really. So I love how she like tries to give him the questionnaire and he just doesn't give a shit. He's just like, yeah, whatever. He's like, no, I was, more about you. Yeah, he's like, I, I was enjoying talking. Uh, screw it, I'm not going to do that. Why, <laughs> why are you ruining this? I really enjoy this. Um, I love how he goes from charming to just really mean. <laughs> to the point he like makes fun of her accent. <laughs> Apparently that was like a real thing yeah. too. Like um like her genuine reaction to that was real. Yeah. And I'm like, that's mean. 
and that accent you've tried so desperately to shed, pure West Virginia. What is your father to you? Is he a coal miner? Does he stink of the land? So he pretty much figures out that she's there for Buffalo Bill. Yeah. And uh, he- like she tries to like... I guess like change the subject back to the questionnaire thing and then he gets mad and like calls her rude for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh and she he asks her, like, well, what do you think about Buffalo Bill? And she's like, blah blah. Why does he skin so they he's called Buffalo Bill because he skins his victims. Yeah. Not fully skins them, but he takes pieces he of their skin plays away. Them in certain yeah, parts. Yeah. He uh he finds them, starves them, skins them, shoots them, and then drops them off. That's why he calls him Buffalo Bill. And he's like, oh, okay. He says, why do you think he skins his victims? She's like, oh, serial killers like to keep trophies. And he goes, I did it. And she goes, no, you ate yours. (laughs) And he's just like, I did. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Uh, And then that's when he, like, verbally destroys her. But then she, like, fights back with it. She kind of mocks him back. And he's super into it. He basically just tells her to screw off. Oh, oh, no. He tries to scare her. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. In the book, it was an Amarone. Yeah. Amarone? Uh, Which apparently does go better with liver. So, like, the thing with that, it's not, like, the worst change, but it's still, like, a little, like... Uh, I'm going to nitpick at it a little bit. Yeah. But um, basically, he's supposed to be well known for like his palate and like serving these great dinners and such like that. And the fact that that's like change and like, because no one's going to drink a candy with some freaking <laughs> liver. I mean, I'm not going to eat liver in the first place, but. <laughs> what, if, what if he changed it like too much? What if it's just like whatever Anthony Hopkins had that day? It's like, I ate his liver with, I don't know, like a. Uh, He's in Maryland. Rum and so, Coke. Oh. Like crab fries, because I'm from Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> He's in Maryland. You would eat crab fries in Maryland. Uh, oh, my God. I think that's why I really like this movie growing up, because I spent a lot of time in Maryland. Not Baltimore, but in Maryland. So, you know, when like when you're like a kid and a movie mentions where you live and stuff, it's like, oh, cool. I didn't live in Maryland, but my grandparents Yeah, did. the movies were always like, oh, cool. Philly was uh, M. Night Shyamalan. And, uh- <laughs> uh, so he basically tells her to screw off. And as she leaves, Migs uh, throws some semen he, in her he, face. He bit his wrists. Yeah, and he and goes, he look at the blood, but it's not really blood. It's not. And when I was a kid, I had no idea what it was. No one would tell me what it was. I was really confused. And then I watched it as like a teen. I'm like, oh, it Ew, makes sense uh, to me now. What? I learned what it was. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> so Hannibal doesn't like that Migs did this because he Hannibal was is about manners. Pissed. He like scream. You know, you Pissed. rarely see him scream. I mean, he has to to scream over everyone else, but he rarely like scream. It's the only even, time we ever see him like yell. Even in the book. Yeah. Like he said it like multiple times and she just kind of was just like frozen. Like what the frick just happened? Yeah. They, uh, uh, so he calls her back and he's like, oh, I wish he didn't do that. Uh, look, the answers you seek are deep w- within yourself. Search out an old patient of mine, Miss Moffat, I think. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so she leaves and uh, she's like real upset. And we get a flashback to her with her dad. In the movie, he's like a sheriff. Yeah. In the book, he was a night watchman. That's it. Uh, which is fine for this movie, but they screwed up in Hannibal. Because yes. when Hannibal writes her the letter, he refers to her dad as a dead night watchman. And at first, when you watch these movies, you're like, wow, that's really mean. He was a sheriff. But then it's like, oh, no, the people writing the script for that movie remembered the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, in the book, he was a night watchman who got himself killed on accident. Yeah, he uh, he's like- still the same, only now he's a cop, which makes... I see why they did it because she now like she was his, he was her whole world in this version. Her mom does not exist in yeah. this version. The thing that annoyed me the most about the whole change between like the sheriff and like the night watch person or whatever is um, the fact that how he died was because he was like I think he like um, loaded he the shock. Yeah, yeah, he, he cocked, cocked his it. Gun. That's it. And like that comes into play later too. Yes, it does. Which I'm and gonna... that would have that would have been so good. <laughs> I'm so annoyed that they changed that. But... Yes, I don't know if she met. She mentions how he dies, but I don't think she goes into super. Yeah, yeah, detail. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, Just I like, do it was like an this accident. scene though. I do like this scene though, where she like starts crying next to her Pinto. She drives a Pinto. Yeah, a Ford, Ford Pinto. The the kind with the flint uh, bumpers that would explode if they got reared into. <laughs> Clarice, what are you doing? You're supposed to be smart. Why is she driving a Pinto? She's got a death. Wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, she starts crying 
And uh, apparently she learned this from an FBI, a woman at the FBI that she was like researching with. She's like, yeah, sometimes I sit by my car and cry when things are getting too much. Oh, uh, a modern movie would not have her cry. She, she would have punched Hannibal Lecter. How dare people have feelings? No, no, not, not in these days. In 2021, your female protagonist, she'll go in there. Hannibal would be like, hello. And she'd be like, shut your goddamn mouth. She's also sassy. Shut your goddamn mouth, mister. <laughs> now you're going to listen to me and Hannibal, <laughs> Hannibal would be like, oh my God, you're right. The I'm patri- your simp. The patriarchy is wrong. <laughs> Here is where Buffalo Bill is. And then that guy who threw his stuff on her, that wouldn't even happen. What would happen in a modern movie, the guy would be like, hey baby, can I get a get a feel? And she'd be like, okay. And then when he puts his arms out, she would break his hands like Catwoman. Oh and the God. Dark Knight Rises, that movie I was in, I don't know if I ever mentioned it. And then she wouldn't cry at her car. She would get in her car and like peel out listening to some Gwen Stefani <laughs> not in a Ford Pinto <laughs> not in a Ford Pinto <laughs> she would blow up and die in a Ford Pinto <laughs> I don't know many car facts but I know the Ford Pinto the Ford was, Pinto was, was a, a death trap bad <laughs> <laughs> but no it's nice to see a character have like you know actual emotions and stuff and emotions yeah, and, and that, that's the other thing too whatever like later on like they show that she's not perfect she makes mistakes yeah and it's yeah. great. Which apparently, it, th- that's another thing that's a little different. In the book, she's a little too confident, yeah. so competent sometimes. Uh, but that's related to another change yeah. coming up. We get a training montage. We see like a day in a life of her at the FBI Academy. Again, this is what I was pointing out where it shows she's not perfect. <clears throat> like the, um, she never checked her corner. Yes, there is that. Uh, and also, one thing about the FBI, they actually worked with the movie. Oh. Uh, because they thought it would lead to more female recruits, which I guess it did. They show her roommate, Ardelia, Ardelia Mapp, who is greatly reduced in the movie version yeah. and totally cut out of the sequel uh, movie version. Uh, but I like Ardelia. I like that she has like a roommate. It would have been nice to see more of their relationship yeah. a little bit. Like, oh, how are you doing as a woman in the FBI? <laughs> then she gets a call from Jack Crawford. And apparently Hannibal likes Clarice so much that he convinced Miggs to kill himself in the middle of the night. How? The orderly heard Lecter whispering to him all afternoon and Miggs crying. They found him at bed check. He'd swallowed his own tongue. So she's a little uh, horrified by that, but then she figured out uh, his yourself thing. She's like, that sounded a little cheesy for him. And she's like, well, he's in Baltimore. So I looked it up and I found a storage thing. So she goes to the storage facility with the weird old German guy. <laughs> Just... That feels like a weird character. I don't know what it is about. He's like, hello, I have this uh, very famous, very uh, secure storage thing. Privacy is very important to my I'm like, That's not how he talked at all, but okay. He looks, like a, he looks like he's dressed like a vampire or something. And then he's got that weird driver who doesn't leave the car. And they're like, hey, can that guy help me lift the door? And he's like, no, he won't do it. It's like, all right, well, that's a weird thing. <laughs> Uh, she has to use her own car jack because she can't rely on men. Damn right. To open up the door. Although, <laughs> to be fair, the old man there, he can't really yeah, help he, much. Mm. She goes into this storage thing and she finds a head in a jar, which is horrifying. The <laughs> eyelash is just like. <laughs> yeah, the eyelash is hanging off. All right. So here is another change from the book. Uh, and I know we're doing this a lot. But trust me, we're leaving out a lot of changes. <laughs> They've, and I'm only mentioning this because it becomes a continuity error in the other movies. They merged Benjamin Rasbell with, uh, what was his name? Klaus. So in the book, spoiler, Hannibal knows who Buffalo Bill is. And in the book, you, he goes back into his memories and replays his, uh, his session with Benjamin Rasbell. Yeah. And it's like, yes, I'm, I'm dating Buffalo Bill, not his name. And I'm also dating this guy, Klaus and Bill got jealous of Klaus and killed him. Because in the book, Hannibal killed Benjamin Raspell. Yeah. Bill killed Klaus. But in the movie, they combine them. So then Hannibal's like, no, I didn't kill Benjamin Raspell. I just found him that way and tucked him away. It's like, oh, okay, Hannibal. Yeah, you know, I just I went over. I'm like, oh, they're dead. Best thing for him, really. His therapy was going nowhere. And in case you guys are <laughs> wondering who Benjamin Raspell is, if you've seen Red Dragon, he's the flutist in the beginning that kept screwing up. So yeah. Hannibal cooked him. But Hannibal admits he knows who Bill is, but he's not going to tell her. Yeah. But he's going to like help her try to find him and give him clues. Uh, and in exchange, he wants a transfer 
to like an institution with a window. Yeah, he wants a view and like yeah. be able to walk around sometimes. Yeah. And, yeah. and Anthony Hopkins is acting his heart out in this scene. <laughs> he's really good in this. He got the Oscar, which I don't really give a shit about the Oscars, but he's not in the movie that much. You know what it beat out? What? In the Oscars? What? Beauty and the Beast. Oh, for best picture? Yeah. That makes sense. Understandable, but <laughs> I love Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> um, but Hannibal, like or Anthony Hopkins, he, he's not in the movie much. But his acting is so good and memorable that it really sticks with you. It's like, it's almost like uh, Alec Baldwin in uh, Glen Gary, Glen Ross. He's in one scene of that movie and he's the most memorable part of that movie. It, it's funny too because like he's so good that you kind of are rooting for him a little bit. A little bit. You're it's like, weird. Well, he's so nice. Yeah, <laughs> and then you like you know see the things he does and yeah. how he is, and you're like, oh, maybe I don't want to root for him, yeah. but also like still kind of are kind of like a um. In Breaking Bad with like Walter White, like later yeah. on. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the Sopranos started that where it's like, this is a bad guy and a murderer who probably shouldn't be on his side, but he's just so likable. When in real life, you'd be like, oh, that's an awful human being. No, I actually really hated him the entire time. I hate Tony. <laughs> Tony Soprano? Yeah. I never actually watched Sopranos. Oh, you should watch it. I have the box set, the VHS box set over there of season one. Maybe I'll watch it that way. <laughs> or use HBO Max that I give you my account for. So uh, Hannibal makes his offer, and then we cut to Bill's next victim, uh, which is Catherine. Yeah. Uh, wh who we will find out is the daughter of a senator, so Bill really fucked up yeah. this one. <laughs> uh, but she is singing American Girl, and she, uh, she's she got the thickness, so that lets you know that she is an American girl. <laughs> By the way, uh, with the scene, uh, obviously it didn't happen yet. She's still driving in her car, but uh, the size 14 thing. So when I was like younger and watching this mm. and I don't know, I I was probably like a size, maybe like two. I was like, so <laughs> I was stick thin. Come on. And I remember we went to high school. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And I was also stick thin. Yeah. God damn it. I wanted to say that. Um, so <laughs> I was 135 pounds when you met that's me. That's not stick thin. I was like 115 pounds, dude. I was super thin. I was a lightweight wrestler. Anyway, and you got your ass kicked. <laughs> I did, I did. But anyway, um, I just remember specifically the size 14, and I don't know why the size 14 stuck with me so much. Of all the things with this movie, you would think like- About of, size 14. Yeah. And I, I just remember when I was recently rewatching this, I was just like, oh, I, I'm now a size 14. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. He's Diana. gonna come for me. Don't say that. Someone's gonna come for you. Oh no. Someone's gonna wear my skin. It's gonna be Ian. <laughs> when we do Hannibal, can I just have like a person like wearing your face? <laughs> how, did, how did they do the Justin face? <laughs> oh, can Joe we do did that? that. Our friend Joe made that. We'll thing. do that. We'll just get a mold <laughs> in your do face. That. <laughs> We're like, oh, hey, Johanna. Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, we'll get up to her kidnap for a second. But <laughs> this scene, I, I love it when she's singing American Girl because whenever this song would come on the radio, like me and my mom would sing it together. Oh, I and, think of Scrubs. Yeah, well, then we would like start quoting the movie. And I actually got like really happy watching this scene because I realized like I really love this movie from when I was a young kid. Me, my mom, my grandfather for like between the age of like five to ten. I watched this movie. It's one of my childhood favorite movies. You watched this when you were like five? Yeah, and it was one of my favorite movies. We used to watch it all the time and quote it. This is not appropriate for a five-year-old. What? What do you mean, what? You weren't watching this with your No! Mom? So when you were 10, you weren't excited for Hannibal to come out because you had already watched Silence of the Lambs like- No! Times. I didn't see this until maybe I was like 14, 13 maybe. I, I, got, I got to make a call. Hello? Hey, mom, it's your son, Tony from Hack the Movies. Uh, uh, question. Were other parents showing their young kids Silence of the Lambs, uh, growing up? Uh, only me. Okay, because I'm being told that it's weird for, like, a five or six-year-old to be really into this movie, and then for a ten-year-old to be real excited for the sequel, because they probably shouldn't have been watching this movie. I don't think you were five. I remember this movie at a young age. Well... Young is young, but not five. Okay, I'm also being told that it's weird for a mother and son to sing American Girl because it reminds them of this movie where women get butchered and turn into a skin suit. Were other moms doing this, or was this just you? <laughs> so none of the other moms you know were showing their young kids Silence of the Lambs and then quoting the movie and singing the songs together? That was, that was just us? 
it was probably, I don't know. I know your friends used to come over the house to watch stuff like that. Okay, yeah, now I am remember that. I used to bring people over the house to watch like R-rated movies, and I think I showed a lot of people Silence of the Lambs. Tony. <laughs> All right, well, uh, well, this is news to me, and now everyone who watches this episode is going to learn that I had a weird... I have a weird relationship with my mom where we really love this movie that kids should not have been watching with their mom. <laughs> I don't think it's a weird relationship. I think it's a special relationship. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting bad signal down here. Bye, Mom. Bye. In this movie that women love, that's supposed to paint a good picture of women and show that they are smart and intelligent, this dumb broad does the dumbest shit ever. She she sees look, a random look, guy. Look, <laughs> she's a good person. She sees a she's a good person. She sees a random guy who she doesn't know in a cast, just moving a couch at night by himself. That's just a normal thing people do. That is just a normal thing people do. And then, and then, look, I don't want to victim blame, but she had so many opportunities to avoid the situation. So where I pretty much was like, you're a dumbass, yeah. is when she decided to go into the back of the yeah, van. When like, he's like, can you get up in that van? And she's like, okay. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, that was the dumb thing. I can understand helping him, but actually being, like, cornered in there, because the couch is there. Like, you're screwed. Yeah. You can't go anywhere. Are you going out the other way? Like, no, you're yeah. you're done. <sighs> so Bill Bill goes, are you model size 14? Mm. And punches the hell out of her. He cuts the back of her jacket, and he sees her skin, and he's, like, all being creepy. Touching it. And, yeah, and he yeah. throws her shirt out the window and drives away. Uh, oh, this is also when we first see the night vision goggles, which come back oh, later. Oh, yeah, that too. Also, that poor kitty cat. Oh, yeah, she was going to feed her cat. Yeah, she was going to and the cat's just like, I want my food. I also like uh, that they show that physically Clarice is struggling to keep up with the male students. Like, they're they're doing, like, punching stuff, and she's yeah. doing things. She's getting her ass kicked. Where in a modern movie, a guy would be like, hey, little girl, why don't you let the big boys play? And then she would be like, oh, yeah play with this and then she would like punch him and then she would do that thing they do in all the Marvel movies where the girls jump up they do that Hurricane Rana yeah like yeah. we get it do you know our what a powers in our hips <laughs> do, do you know what a Hurricane Rana is look up Ray Mysterio he does the Hurricane Rana but like every girl in and I guess Ant-Man you know, does Lena used to do that too I'm sure they all did. Um, but that's how it would be in a modern movie. And the guy would be like, oh, I can't believe I'm shit by a girl. Uh, but this movie is like good. So they're just like, yeah, Clarice is going to struggle to deal with these guys. And she's tiny. And she's very like, tiny. Especially, what was it? The first scene where um, Crawford called her into the office. Yeah. And she's in the elevator. Oh, the, yeah, that, oh my God. I forgot so about tiny. that. so tiny. Yeah. There's a great scene early on that really like sells you. And like this girl feels out of place. And what better way to show that than her in an elevator with guys who just tower over she's her. She's so tiny. How, how tall is Jodie Foster? I don't know. Not that tall. She's very tiny. Well, yeah, I, I was just curious in general. I forget the size. Um, you know who would know? John Hinckley. I think he knows how tall. That's the guy who shot Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Because <laughs> he wanted to impress Jody Foster. Clarice then accompanies Jack on the way to a new victim. They found a new victim. It's not Catherine. It's a different victim. Uh, and on the way there, we get an important inf piece of information that we don't know is important yet. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, he tells him how he does it. And he's like, this is the girl. She was the first one killed, but the third one found because he weighted her down. And then he got lazy with the other ones, he says. Lazy. But we know, we, we find out later there's yeah. more to that. So on the way to the autopsy, Clarice basically goes like, hey, you sent me down there because you knew Hannibal would have like more to say. And he's like, yeah, if I sent you down there knowing exactly, you would have figured it out and then made fun of you and then just shut down. Yeah. Which is smart on Jack's part. Yeah. Remember, we don't know this. This would make more sense if it was a sequel. But Jack knows how fucking Hannibal works. He's seen what it did. So he's like, oh, God. Uh, when I sent Will down there last time, he ended up calling the goddamn killer. It was a whole problem. <laughs> so I like that he's, like, learned from that situation. Uh, but in the but in this movie, you just you just assume they have a history together. Maybe yeah. He's the guy who arrested like him. FBI. In yeah. yeah. They get to the where the body is it's in a funeral home which I guess makes sense but is that the worst time because there's a funeral happening yeah <laughs> um 
And this is where he's like, oh, I don't want these kind of violent sex crimes. Let's uh, talk about it away from the ladies. And they go away and they talk and they just leave Clarice there. And that's another creepy shot where just everyone's staring at her. Yeah, she's sitting, like some of the dudes are just like, hey, look at this. Which, look by the way, lady. how were guys in the... Did they just assume guys were just always staring at women in the night? Is that the nineties were like? Let us know. Were you an old? I think it's because, especially because they were cops. They're just regular cops. Yeah. She's in the FBI, so technically she has authority over them. So I think that's what they, they were like a little like. I guess so. This this, um, this chick. Yeah, but she uh, walks around the funeral home, and uh, she gets a flashback to her dad's funeral. Yep. So we find more out about her dad. Uh, do you know who was playing? The organ who ends up being in the autopsy room? No. That actor didn't look familiar? No. Look around. Look around the story. You might recognize that actor. Nah. I know what you're going to do. I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The guy playing yeah, the organ know, is I Bob know. the Goon from Batman. <laughs> we have his action figure here. <laughs> Remember Bob the Goon from Batman? <laughs> Joker kills him for no reason. <laughs> Uh, um, I like that actor. He shows up in a yeah, lot. Of he, he's he's pretty good. He shows up in a lot of things. Uh, I always I didn't know that for years, and I watch Batman a lot, and I watch this movie a lot, as you found out. I think you were more concerned about actual Batman. No, I used to quote Batman too. I was the weird kid that would quote Batman and Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> no wonder you were picked on. <laughs> uh, so they do the autopsy on the girl. And oh, they, oh, can we talk too about how like, all right, gentlemen, like go on. Oh, get. yeah, yeah. Like Clarice has to like kick all the guys out, and they're like, you, you, you they, they would appreciate your help and thank you, but we're gonna take care of her now. So go on, get out. And they're like, all right. <laughs> I don't know why they look so offended. Like I'd be like, I won't be here for this. Not my job. Bye. <laughs> uh, so a the, woman told them. So they examine the girl. They find out like there's dirt under her fingernail. They cut out diamond shapes on her back. Did it like weren't some of her th thumbnails like kind of like her thumbnails uh, fingernails like kind of like damaged too? Yeah, some of them were like gone. Yeah, and the other ones had dirt on their nails. She realized she's from like a city because she's got like tattoos and stuff. Glittery nail polish. Yeah, uh, but the important thing is Clarice looks in her throat and they find something in her throat. And at first, like, oh, is that like a sea pie, like a leaf or something? It's like no, it's a cocoon for a some kind of moth. Yep. Which I know you're a fan of. You have her moth or shirt, which don't plug what website you got it from because they screwed up that printing. Thanks, <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> but it's it, a really cute design. It's just the printing is It really was bad. a $12 shirt. <laughs> I don't care. Like It's like from far away, it looks fine, but then when you yeah. actually see it, it's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. The shirt's actually comfy, like the material, so I don't care. Yeah. So after that, Clarice, and I like the scene, she calls out Jack Crawford. It's like, hey, it's, he's like, hey, did I make you uncomfortable? Get in the car. There? And she's like, yeah, well, the people look to you. It matters. He's like, all right. He's not less like, listen, honey, <laughs> this is how it works here. See? And he smokes a cigar or something. <laughs> I should have twirls as much. Book. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Could you imagine me adapting this book? <laughs> Clarice, lame. It's a guy named Clarence, and he's big and buff, and he's Italian. <laughs> and his favorite movies. You know his favorite lies. movies, Roadhouse. He tells everyone about misogynist. <laughs> She takes the cocoon to the museum. What museum is that? I've seen that in so many movies. She takes it to this very famous museum, and uh, we find the bug guys. Who people only know is the bug guys. The one guy was the second actor who was also in Manhunter as a different character. But then there's the guy with the wonky eye, who I've always called guy with the wonky eye, who in the book she ends up being in a relationship with. Yeah, and it changes the whole ending of her being with him too. Yeah, but in this one, I kind of like this too, where he's like flirting with her and she's like into it. Yeah, he was just like, oh, yeah, cheeseburgers and beer. No, yeah. Maybe some wine. And she's, like, so. totally fine with it. She's like, oh, are you flirting with me? It's like, oh, wow. She has, like, <laughs> a little... Your shot? Hey. Because <laughs> that was a problem with um, Agent Scully. There was a problem with Agent Scully where it's like, wow, she does not have... Like, she goes on one date early on in the series, and we never see her go on a date until she randomly shacks up with a dude in the Jodie Foster episode. Huh. You know, Scully just sleeps with a dude in Philly, and then it turns out he's Philly. being possessed by his Jodie Foster tattoo. Huh. Uh, but yeah, but other than those two times, like Scully never dated. It's like, wow, you can have a strong female character that also likes to date and stuff. It doesn't have to be one or the other. 
So I like how Clarice is like, yeah, I'm kind of into you. What's up? <laughs> I'm a little busy right now. We're trying to catch a guy uh, who skins women. And there's this other guy who's into me. He, he killed a crazy person for me. <laughs> he likes to eat people's faces. Anyway. <laughs> that, I got that, a lot of baggage. <laughs> so these, these, this is Clarice's choice in men. The guy who skins people. The dude who eats people. Her boss. Or the bug guy. And at one point you sit there, you're like, I think the bug guy is the yeah. best <laughs> uh, But they find out that it is a death's head moth because it has a skull. Uh, and it's, it's like, like on the back. Yeah. And it's uh, super, super rare. I think it's it, poisonous too. I don't know if it's poisonous. But I saw that it was poisonous. I don't know, but uh, it's definitely rare. Like you said, you, you have to special order these. Because like, they're, they're in Asia. Yeah, because they're like from eggs. You have to like really, you got to keep them temperatured and stuff. And what I like about the death's head moth is on the cover. I don't know if you've ever noticed it. You see how it has the skull? Yep. That's not actually the skull on the moth. No, I know. That is the famous yeah. the famous picture of the naked girls yeah. making the skull face. I That's another thing I didn't notice for years. Oh, yeah? And then I thought, yeah, someone pointed out. I'm like, oh, that is that. Fa- who did that picture? Dolly, maybe? I forget who it was. I don't but remember. Th- that one artist, he like shaped a bunch of naked girls, which we probably can't even show on YouTube. But you can do naked yoga on YouTube. Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen. What the hell? Let's do let's do naked yoga while we it's review not- these movies. Yeah, that's what they want to see. <laughs> Someone's watching. They're like, is she a size 14? <laughs> 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 so we get a look at Buffalo Bill's dungeon, and it looks exactly how you think it would. Yeah. It's the scariest goddamn thing I've ever seen. Uh, it's like its own little house underneath the house. It's, it's like weird. The, it's, it's why a, is it so big? Did he a, like carve stuff out? Because like it's when, a little over the top. If well, I'm going to be honest, when when we look at like the actual like where it is later, yeah. like I'm actually wondering if he was like digging stuff out to make it bigger because there's no way that was just underneath there. You know what I just remembered? There's a guy. He's been doing this for years. I think he's still doing it on YouTube. He's been excavating his unfinished basement with like Tonka trucks, remote control Tonka trucks. He gets his trucks and he scoops the thing and he takes the dirt out and he's been digging in his basement for years just with these trucks, these remote control trucks. But why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Does he work or anything? Like, oh. It's probably real therapeutic. It's like how old people do train sets and stuff. It's probably like, I'm going to play with my tractors and excavate my basement. <laughs> uh, but yeah, his basement looks terrifying. We hear her screaming, and he's got a little dog. He's a little puppy. Precious. He's precious. He's precious. So in the book, I don't really need to mention this because it's not that important, but I want to mention it. In the book, Bill, he likes to cuddle with Precious and watch old film strips of his mom winning some beauty pageant and then going down the, a sliding board. And at the end of the book, they're like, Okay, so we looked into him, and that first film strip, that was his mom. But the sliding board, that's just some random woman. I don't know. But when he's with Precious, he's like, here, Precious, mom's going to go down the sliding board. (laughs) Bill talks way more in the book. In this movie, they're like, all right, I think we can sell this without too much dialogue other than her usual 14. Um, I wish he talked more because I love the Buffalo Bill (laughs) voice. So as I said earlier, Catherine is the daughter of a Senator, Ruth Martin. They turn on the TV at the FBI Academy and Ruth Martin's on TV and she's like, please, pleading for yeah. you're in control. My my daughter is Catherine. Yeah, my we'll give daughter- you whatever you want. Yeah. Like, blah, blah, blah. I'll forgive you. Just return her. My daughter is Catherine. My daughter. And they're like, wow, that's really smart. If you keep saying her name. Uh, it makes it, her a person. It, it, person, yeah, it humanizes her, and it makes it harder for him to kill if he doesn't see her as an object. Yeah. But here's the problem with it. I don't think Bill's watching the TV. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Bill's watching the TV at yeah. all. And I don't think he cares. Well, no, he does because of the very end. The very end, we realize he cared a little bit, but mm. yeah, I don't think he was like obsessively watching because yeah. he wanted to get away with it. But So Clarice goes back to Hannibal, and she's like, I've got an offer for you. Oh, 3D glasses dropped. She goes, I have an offer for you. I found a uh, this this uh, institution on an island. So she's like, one week out of the year, you'll be able to walk on the beach and swim in the ocean with SWAT team surveillance, blah, blah, blah. And then he looks at it and he goes, Institute for Anthrax Research Animal Test. He's like, that's just one part of the island. <laughs> uh, but it is only good if Catherine gets rescued. 
That's like the little caveat yeah. there. And Hannibal demands that she gives him more personal information about herself in exchange for information on Bill. That's like their agreement, the quid pro quo Clarice. We find out that the movie has killed off Clarice's mother. Yeah who was alive in the book. Uh, she's like, yeah, my mother was dead and then my father died and I went to live with uh, an aunt and uncle on a ranch. In the book, like her mom's alive, but can't yeah, like, she support can't, yeah, her. Yeah, she can't support the whole family because there's like a bunch of children. I forget right. how many, but um, Right, yeah. so she like sends her off. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was a little interesting, but I guess it builds up her and her father's relationship a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, how they were so close. And, which yeah. ties into her wanting like respect from male authority figures, the whole thing. But yeah, she mentioned she lived on a horse and sheep ranch. And if you're looking at the title of this movie, that's going to make sense later. <laughs> so here's the big part. Uh, Hannibal mentions that Buffalo Bill is, uh, well, he explains what's the purpose of the, the cocoon. What does it represent? It represents change. Bill is trying to change. He mentions he's tried to be many things over the years. When we see, getting back to visual storytelling later in the movie, we see one of the things he was trying to be. Um, but he's like, yeah, so he's trying to become like a woman she's just like that doesn't make sense she's talking to like uh transvestites don't cancel me it's what they were called back then it's what they're called just in the movie trans she's like uh trans people they're not like really violent he doesn't they don't really exhibit these kind of behaviors and like i was trying to think how has this movie not gotten canceled like years later you know how people love to look no, back that some i've seen some stuff there were some stuff uh newt was telling me when the movie came out a lot of people were upset about it but the movie and the book make it very clear that he is not actually trans. Yeah, there's like other shit going on with him. Yeah. That it's... He's got like, he he hates himself. He yeah. hates what he is. So he's trying to constantly change and be something else. Billy is not a real transsexual, but he thinks he is. He tries to be. He's tried to be a lot of things I expect. And this is like the current thing he's trying to be in the book. When you, when Hannibal replays his uh, patients like sessions, yeah, he remembers, I think it was Benjamin was just like, yeah, I don't even think he's gay. I think he picked up on it in the military and it was just something he was trying out. I, I'm not even sure he's really gay. He's just doing it because it's different than what he's used to. <laughs> so I think that's a the movie makes a really good point. Like, Hey, he's not really trans. He thinks he is. Uh, the book goes into more detail. There was a deleted scene. Mm -hmm. Uh, where Hannibal went into more detail and they cut that out. Um, I think he even tells him, like, you know, uh, there's a few major um, places that deal with uh, gender reassignment surgery, hit them up, cross, uh, cross reference them, and whatnot. And then, since we're talking about Bill, we get one of the other famous scenes from this movie. Huh. It puts the lotion on the skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> so a scene. That was famously recreated, and I think done better in a little movie called Joe Dirt with Buffalo Bob, <laughs> who was played by Brian Tyler, who was also in the X-Files. <laughs> and oh my God. who else was he? Well, he was one of the punks in Terminator, but he was Shao Kahn in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Woo. But yeah, Catherine's in the thing. He's making sure he lotions up her skin. Uh, it's kind of creepy that the dog, who has no idea what's going on, is like, what? There's a person in the hole. What's going on? Ah. Hi down there. <laughs> like, I have no idea what humans do, and this is really horrifying, I guess. Whatever. I mean, that's probably all the dog's seen. Yeah. So it doesn't <laughs> seem like anything different with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he wants her to lotion up her skin so it's nice and smooth for when he eventually does what he does. And there's that really creepy shot where he's pulling up the thing and you see the fingernails that they hint to her. screaming. This movie is when I really... Yeah, when he makes fun of her screaming, I'm like, yeah. Ugh. <sighs> Uh, Ted Levine, so fucking good. He's such a good well, actor. Everybody in this movie slaps. <laughs> like, the perfect casting. <laughs> um, yeah, that... It's one of the most chilling scenes of the movie because <laughs> it's like, oh man, she's fucked. <laughs> Chilton decides to let Hannibal know that that whole offer was bullshit. Um, he's like, yeah, it was a scam. You got scammed. Uh, but I have a different thing. Uh, better deal. You're going to tell them all about this. And I love Hannibal's in this fucking containment thing and his nose is flat. <laughs> Chillin is an asshole. I mean, Hannibal doesn't deserve to be respected. He's a fucking murderer. He's still a person. He eats people. <laughs> like, come on, he eats people. Yeah, the dude goes too far. Hannibal, they only hint to it a little bit in this movie, but Hannibal straight up in the book, like, murders people and makes art out of their bodies. Oh, I know. Well, I mean, they kind of do in this. 
A little bit, but not to the level. Well, yeah. None of the movies really show him doing that other than this one scene and that's coming up. Yeah. Uh, The show does it a lot. But yeah, Hannibal is like awful, but like, it's so funny. We're like, Chilton is so scummy that we're rooting for the killer. Uh, Chilton is such an idiot. He leaves his pen in Hannibal's cell. Freaking idiot. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? (laughs) Yeah, so Hannibal is basically like, um, I'm only going to tell who he is if I could talk to the senator in person uh then we get a call jack crawford gets a call being like from some guy and who is that guy famous producer roger corman (laughs) he's just in the movie it just cuts to roger fucking corman going hey did you have a trainee make a fake deal it turns out the deal was fake for the anthrax island thing he's like yeah i kind of had to and he's like all right well so and so here is pissed everyone's angry at you speaking of roger corman uh, I think a year before, actually, maybe the same year, he directed his last movie, Frankenstein on Down. Go back and watch that episode. It's a really good episode. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So they bring Hannibal to Tennessee, and he's finally wearing his iconic mask, yep. uh, which is like a half hockey mask that they put on him. <laughs> and we're like, right away, he's just being a dick to everyone. He's all like, oh, uh, Senator Martin, uh, did you breastfeed Catherine? And she's like, yeah, why? He's like, oh, tough on your nipple. Uh, What does he say? Like, oh, when she's on the slab? Yeah, yeah. When you cut off a man's limb, he can still feel it. When they put Catherine on the slab, Will will tickle you. (laughs) He's such a dick. But then he gives him like a ton of information or supposedly. Mm. Uh, He says Buffalo Bill might have lived in Philadelphia. It's it's vague stuff. Like, he gives a description of them, but it's yeah. so vague, yeah. but it's enough to like keep them interested to be like, oh, and they say what his, does he know? They say his name was Lewis Friend, which turns out to be a trick later on. Yeah. Oh, and Senator, just one more thing. Love your suit. In Tennessee, Clarice, who again is not supposed to be there anymore. No. She's been removed, uh, but she sneaks in. Um, a lot of like there's a lot of like character actors in there where you're like, that's the guy from the Austin Powers. Yeah. That's the guy from this thing. There's two of them that are coming up. Uh, a lot of character actors, but she basically sneaks into Tennessee uh, or pretends like she's supposed to be there. She returns Hannibal's um, drawings. Mm-hmm. We mentioned earlier that uh, Dr. Chilton took away his drawings because yeah. he draws things from memory because he has, n- he's n- memories are all he has. Yeah. I don't know if you got to Hannibal yet, the book. I didn't get to the bucket. But no. Thomas Harris added something where there's like, he's got some super memory thing where he has a memory palace that he can it's like go a pho- to. Photographic, photographic memory? memory, it? but it's like he recreates the memories in his mind and he's making a palace of all his favorite things and he can relive moments. It gets a little cartoony. What the hell? The Hannibal book gets a little cartoony. Uh, so she returns the paintings and she's like, hey, your anagrams are showing. Lewis Friend is, what did I, I have it here. Lewis Friend is an anagram for iron disulfide, which is fool's gold. Yeah. That's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> he basically tells her, like, I want more information on you before I give you anything else. Uh, and then she tells the story of the silence of the land. Yeah. Which is another big change from the book. Not a bad change. Actually, it is a pretty big change. It, it works. So in the book, she's at the horse and sheep farm. Yeah. She wakes up to see her aunt and uncle slaughtering the sheep, as as you do. Uh, and she's yeah, like... Yeah, as you do. <laughs> what else do you do on there? I wouldn't kill a lamb. You're not a farmer. <laughs> if I was a farmer, my animals would be alive. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, they're killing them. Um, and she had a blind horse on mm-hmm. the ranch, and they were going to kill him, too, because he... Make some glue. Yeah, he's not useful anymore. So in the book... The screaming of the lamb scares her, but she tries to rescue the horse. And then she succeeds in rescuing yeah, the horse. Yeah, she like part rides him, part leads him to like yeah. an orphanage. An orphanage that just and takes. And she just stays there. They the, don't care. The orphanage. And keeps the horse. The orphanage takes her in. Well, the farmer didn't want the horse back. They were going to kill mean, it. Still. Um, yeah, so they let her keep it there. And the horse apparently has a long. So in that yeah, version. Apparently the horse died like a year before the actual yeah. story. So how it is in the book is like her seeing something was in danger and saving it like fulfilled this thing in her where like I need to be able to save other people yeah like I need to save they like this feels good I was alone and scared and I I wanted someone to save me and I have now saved this horse I want to go into a career where I could save people the movie 
They get rid of the horse, which yeah. I'm fine with that. It simplifies it. I mean, Silence it. of the Lambs, so it, simplifi- it, it, it simplifies it. In the movie, she saves a lamb, but then she gets caught. The uncle sends her away to an orphanage, and they kill the lamb. Yeah, they still kill the lamb. So now it's changed the context a little bit to where it's like she is like sad that she never got to save that lamb, and now it's like I need to save Catherine to fill this because again. No one was there for me when I was a kid. I need to like save this person so I can like feel good about myself. It changes the context. It's a little different. The characters are very different from that point, but it still works. Yeah. It's not like a change that ruins the movie. Yeah. Would I have done it differently? I don't know. But I thought it was like a perfectly fine change. But he, he lets her know like everything is in the case file that she needs to catch him. Then she gets kicked out by Dr. Chilton. Yeah, and then she actually breaks free from all these people who are I trying know. to lead her out. And then and she, she runs grabs the back file and he, and he, like, he, he does like rubs the, her ooh. finger. So the movie, it's supposed Goodbye, to take place Clarice. in Tennessee. Yeah, it's supposed to take place in Tennessee. That's the last time we see her. Uh, but it's shot in Pittsburgh. Do you know how I know that was shot in Pittsburgh? Because you've been to Pittsburgh? I have been to Pittsburgh. I was at a movie called The Dark Knight Rises. I might have mentioned it, but no, that is not how I know it was shot in Pittsburgh. I've never even been to that building. How do I know it was shot in Pittsburgh? Because George A. Romero, the creator of Night of the Living Dead, is an uh, actor in that scene. He's the guy in the walkie-talkie. Huh. And he's from Pittsburgh. That's funny. Do you know George Romero? Me and him made a movie together. It was called Hack the Living Dead. Yeah, I was in it. Yeah, you were in it. Yeah, it's I- a really good movie. Go and check out Hack the Living Dead. I think... I think me and George worked really well together on that movie, which is amazing because I made it, you know, like four or five years after he died and he shot all his scenes, I think before my mom was even born, but we really came together and we made Hack the Living Dead pretty great. We have merch available. Please check that out. Anyway, (laughs) so she gets kicked out. And then uh, I kind of want to mention that we see Hannibal. They're pissed that they had to give him a second dinner. He ordered extra rare lamb chops. It's like, all right, come on, guy. He's a little... <laughs> Sorry, we have people knocking on the wall over there. <laughs> They're still mad about Ghostbusters too. They come back once in a while. Someone threw a brick into the store the other day. <laughs> He's drawing new pictures. And one of the pictures well, he Clarice. drew is Clarice with a lamb. Now, I want to tell you fans... If you're enjoying this episode, if you would like this VHS tape signed by me and Johanna, whoever can draw Johanna carrying a lamb like Cannibal <laughs> Lecter the best, whoever draws Johanna carrying the lamb, just like Hannibal Lecter, whoever gets as close as they can, the best Johanna carrying a lamb oh picture, my God. I will mail you this copy of this VHS signed. Let Do it. Do it. Tweet it. Instagram it to us. Let us know. And uh, whoever does the best one, I'll send it. Oh, my God. Hannibal breaks out. This scene is awesome. (laughs) How well he planned this is insane. (laughs) He, like, hid the thing in his mouth. What was that? What part of the pen was that? It was the clip. The The clippy part? Yeah, it was metal. So Yeah, I was trying to figure out what exactly it was. So he breaks out of his cuffs. He cuffs the one guy. beats the shit out of the other dude. Uh, Then he bites the other guy's face. And this part used to give me chills as a kid. He's like listening to the music and then you hear the other cop getting away and then he grabs the knife. He's like, ready when you are. I'm like, oh my God. Uh, So then the cops downstairs realize something's going on. Yeah, they see the elevator. They see the elevator go down. Then they hear gunshots and they're like all freaking out. Uh, So they they go up and they're going to see like where Hannibal is. Uh, And when I used to watch this on VHS, like shitty VHS, which you can own. You can own the copy that I grew up with. Um... (laughs) Because it wasn't like widescreen. I always thought this scene was funny when they break in and the one guy like points to the ceiling. And I'm always like, how is he going to hide there? And now when I watch it on widescreen, it's like, oh, there was like another level yeah. that I'm like, all right, now it makes sense. But when you watch it on like VHS, like crop, you're like, what do you think he was Spider Man? What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> uh, but yeah, this, they kind of do the Blood Angel when he, when he hangs the cop up. So the. But he. <sighs> He's yeah. like gutted too. Yeah, he's so it's weird, but like he's still like spread out, but it's not an actual yeah. blood eagle. Yeah, it's not an actual blood eagle, but it, when you first see it through the window, it's really creepy. Yeah. Uh, so what the blood eagle is, and I think they were me- they mentioned this in the movie Rotor, which we talked about in rental reviews. You cut out the back and you pull out the lungs to look like wings. You also like break wings. the ribs and rip them open. Yeah, you break the ribs, and they did it on the show. And you, you ever watch out- Vikings? 
No. They do it on Vikings. Yeah, so you hang out the lungs to look like wings, and it's real chilling and creepy. Yeah, the skin's, like, f- out, too, with it. Yeah, everything. but in this yeah. one, it's like he's cut, he's disemboweled, and then they have, like, that American flag yeah. behind him, and it still looks creepy. And then they notice uh, Pembre, Sergeant Pembre, is on the floor bleeding out of his face. Like, his face is mutilated, yeah. which is also really creepy. So Hannibal is gone. They have no idea where he is. A SWAT team shows up. And the two SWAT team officers we see are singer Chris Isaac. <laughs> that is Chris Isaac. And Daniel Von uh, Bargan, who was the the military school teacher and Malcolm in the Middle and uh, Kruger on Seinfeld, George's uh, inept uh, boss. Yeah. So we get like one of the best twists I've seen in a it's movie. It's so good. But they're taking the cop out and they notice blood dripping yeah. and they're like, oh, he's up there and they gotta like be quiet about it. Yeah, yeah. They, I forgot. They said something on the walkie-talkie like, oh, everything's clear or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they're like, everything's clear. <laughs> um, so they open up the thing and we don't see Hannibal's face. This is because <laughs> Hannibal is not in the elevator shaft. He switched clothes with the guy much like Michael Myers in the beginning of Halloween Also peeled some of his face off to wear his face. He's wearing the... How creepy would it be if someone was wearing your face? I'd be really freaked out if someone wore my face. Would you hack me? I'd hack me. And then it cuts to, like, Ardelia running and stuff. It's real freaking tense. <laughs> She's talking to Clarice. Ardelia's talking to Clarice. And they're like, is he going to come after you? She's like, I don't really think so. I don't see why he would. Uh, but then they start to investigate the case closer. And something Hannibal told her was uh, he covets things. What do we covet? By what we see. And they realize he and must know. He must have known the first girl because it's the only one he weighed it down because he didn't want people to find her. Because then it would link back to him, which it ultimately does. Yeah. So she goes to the victim's house and the dad's there. And speaking of good actors, even bit part actors, that dad plays sad really well. Like you feel really bad for the dad. It's like, it's still the way she left it. And uh, don't they say that in the ring too? I think so. Yeah. You can tell like that's a dad who's going through a lot. And it's like, oh, that's a bummer. Uh, But she goes through her uh, personal stuff, which I think is mean. It's meter in the book. Um, she opens up a picture and she sees like her, the girl like naked and it's stuff. It's uh, the jewelry box and the she jewelry notices box. that like the little felt part. That yeah, you can like pull it out. It's, or this silk. is this is like a weird change they did because in the book that's Catherine's room, and she finds like Catherine was taking these pictures for some reason, and Ruth Martin walks in. She's like, "What do you have there?" And like Clarice is like, "No, trust me, you don't want to see these." And like Ruth eventually sees it. I guess they wanted the scene of her finding it, so they, like, you, you do what you do with adaptations. Yeah. You rearrange stuff. Um, but, yeah, so she sees the pictures of her, like, all naked and stuff. And then, because this girl was a tailor, she goes through her clothes and sees the diamond shapes. And that's when it, like, clicks. She's like, this person must be a tailor that this girl knew. She calls Jack Crawford, and Jack's like, don't worry, we already got it. And we're on our way. We're in the yeah. plane now. We should get uh, there in a half hour. Yeah, which is smart what he did. Uh, Because they were basically Hannibal gave them good advice. They're like, yeah, there's a few places for gender reassignment. So they crossed his name with like known offenders and they found a guy named James Gum. In the book, they tell you he screwed up his own name. Uh, (laughs) uh, Who tried to import like a bunch of death's head moths and got caught. Uh, So they're on their way there and she decides to interview the girl's friend. And then she's like, oh, who does this person she worked for? It's like, oh, it's this old lady. Here's her address. And another great twist. I didn't think they could top the previous twist, but this twist is I. This twist is so freaking good. When you watch this with someone who's never seen the movie before, this is one of those oh yeah. shit moments. So the whole time, you see the SWAT team and Jack Crawford about to like storm the house, and then meanwhile Bill is fighting with uh, Catherine because she like tricked Precious. Into yeah, the she hole. like tied the bone onto the thing with the bucket, yeah. and then she ended up pulling Precious yeah. down into the well with her. So the whole time you're like waiting for them to like storm in. Uh, which in which the first time you see this, I don't know how I felt the first time I saw this, but I imagine if you watch this the first time, you'd be like, oh, it's kind of weird Clarice isn't in the scene. Seems like this is like a big deal. Uh, they storm in, they break in. Yeah, they're ringing the doorbell. The ring, it, they, it cuts so well. It's so, again, I said this earlier, it's so good to talk about a good movie on the show again. <laughs> it's, yeah, like, thank you for finally having me for a good movie. It's the fucking King Kong <laughs> Lives, it, collateral damage. Yeah. <sighs> 
Ghostbusters suit. Oh my God, they threw another brick through the door. I'm sorry. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> got a note on it? Yeah, it's probably telling me to die. Anyway, um, and then they all storm in. There's no one here, Jack. Clarice. Your name is? Oh, uh, Jack Gordon. Oh my God, we skipped the biggest part of the movie. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Back up, back up, back up. How did we skip this scene? Well, she figures out it's a human suit, but we see Bill dancing to goodbye horses, uh. <laughs> wearing the top of the woman's suit, and then tucking his penis. We can't show it. And you see, like, there's because it's not like a perfect like, yeah. cut either. You see, like, the jaggedness of like the head, yeah. and oh, and my we God. see him dancing and goodbye pinching his nose. Goodbye horses. Yeah, uh, it's so creepy. I don't know how we we almost went this whole Would review. You, mm-mm. Uh, this whole mm-hmm. review not mentioning it. Holy <laughs> shit. I mean, uh, uh, so we're yeah. talking about like actual plot stuff or whatever, yeah. not like the... the uh, that was part. very important to the plot. I needed to see Ish. him tuck his penis on her. <laughs> so Clarice is there, and I love Ted Levine so much because he is... <laughs> he's doing a good job. Like, Bill, like, can't... I'm sorry, Jane Gum. He can't, like, hide... Like, he can't be a human person. Like, he's, like, doing a really bad job of hiding. He's like... Ugh. Did you know her? No, uh uh-uh. Oh, wait. Was she a great big fat person? Uh, but he's like, hey, so do you guys have any uh, leads on what's going on with the killer? And it's so obvious, like, what's happening. Yeah, the cops have no idea yeah. around here. But there's a really great scene. Before Clarice figures out, she walks into the room and the camera moves back and there's just a picture of, like, a moth. Yep. On the wall, like, framed. Then it's like, you as the viewer are like, oh, no! <laughs> Uh, but what finally tips her off, she sees all the thread around. And it's like, huh, he's not the tailor, but he still has all his thread. And then a death's head moth lands on it. And you can see the string on it when you watch it in HD. There's a string on the moth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to look at that again. She figures out who he is. She tries to arrest him. He runs into the basement. Now, Clarice is supposed to be smart. Why the fuck did she go into that creepy ass bay? I would have called for backup. I would have called. I would have seen if he had a phone. I would have went to my car, radio. I think she, well, number one, I, I think she knew that they were going to come to her anyway because if they're going to the other place and it's a dead end and yeah. there's nothing there, like they're obviously going to go. Well, she like, needs to call to someone her. now before she goes. Oh, yeah. into- but I think I think she was in a panic and in such a I got to save a person mode. Yeah. I think she thought that something would happen to Catherine. I'm sorry. If you were in a basement and I, I knew the killer was down there, I'm calling for help. Actually, you know what? If I stay there too long, he might come up and kill me. I'm just leaving you. Yeah, there. if I knew you were in a well or something, I wouldn't even be in that area. I'd be like, oh, that sucks for him. <laughs> uh, so instead, <laughs> thoughts <she's>, and prayers. <laughs> instead, she goes into the scariest <laughs> dungeon basement. She finds the woman's suit, which is stitched together like really poorly, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> What, is he gonna have two different boots? Well, that was There's the thing boot. too. Like again, with the yeah. part of the head, it's like super like jagged. I don't cut. think the person doing the special effects was. I don't think they read the script where they said he's a great tailor because they're making this janky woman suit. <laughs> um. So yeah, Catherine is like really, really depressed. She's like, "Please help me." She's like, "I can't help you right now. I gotta yeah, find this just guy." Like, Shut up! Shut the dog up! Like yeah. I gotta find this guy. She's like closing all the doors yeah. to make sure he can't sneak in on her. Again, visual storytelling. As she's going around, we we heard earlier that he tried to be many things. We start to see SWAT stickers and anti-government stuff everywhere. And it's like, oh, that was one of his phases he went through. I'm like, that's a little disturbing. <laughs> and then we see uh, Mrs. Lippman, poor Mrs. Lippman in the bathtub. He left her in the bathtub. Why would he leave her there? Why? Who would leave a dead thing in their house for that long? I don't think he cares. This is one of the most tense scenes. It's like the the Hannibal Lecter escaping scene and then this. My anxiety goes yeah. through the... I know what happens every yeah. time, but my anxiety literally goes through like to, to the hundreds yes. every single time I watch this. The lights go out. <sighs> uh, she has no idea where she is, but he's got the night vision goggles yep. on. And we even still get that male gaze thing. You hear the pew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really, really creepy. Uh, it, but this is where we also realize Bill is stupid. He gets himself killed. Well, like you said, it's a callback. Yeah, this is this is what I meant. Here's what I'm I, very upset about that because that would have been great. Yes, yes. Here's what I want to tell you. Uh, he cut. Co- it's it's a Colt Python, and they are what is it? Double action revolvers. 
They do not need to be cocked. You don't need to pull the hammer backs on those, uh, hammers back on those. So he cocks the gun to be dramatic, even though he doesn't have to. It gives away his location. She just opens fire on him and kills him. Yeah. Um, and he has more butterfly stuff. But then we see he was collecting newsprints of himself, which is pretty cool. Uh, she, like When she's shooting him, it shoots out the window in the back. So all the lights coming through. Yeah, so she can actually see now. It's blood he, out everywhere. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was interesting that Catherine keeps Precious when they're taking her away. Someone goes to take the dog I and she keeps it. I think it's because it's like the only thing she kind of had that yeah. was like an innocent thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she had like a companion for like yeah. a few minutes there. Then we get to the end of the movie. And this is uh, Clarice has graduated. In the book, it's not clear if she graduates. Yeah. Because she was failing exams working on Jack Crawford's case. Uh, but at this one, she graduates. Um, she's there with Bug Guy. Bug Guy's friend is hitting on Ardelia. And then she runs into Jack Crawford and she finally gets the respect from a male authority figure she's been craving. Uh, and it's really nice scene. It's like, hey, you did really good. But then they, it's the added romance kind of like sours it a little bit yeah. for me. Uh, but she gets a phone call. Who's calling her? Shocked Pikachu <laughs> face. It's Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter. Lecter. <laughs> Who's just living it up in South America. Uh, it cracks me up too uh, when they actually show it's him and the fly lands yeah, on, fly his land on his head. He's wearing the wig. Uh, but he's basically like, hey, uh, good job. Have your lambs stop screaming. Because this movie, she's haunted by the screaming of the lambs and she wants to silence them. Um, really, really good ending. And I love the line. He's like, I'd love to talk more, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. And it's Dr. Chilton. And it, it's so unfortunate that the book doesn't end that way. Yeah. So because the, she ends up just go, with the guy. Yeah, she the, ends the up with guy, the guy. And she just guy. falls asleep. And that's supposed and then to be the Hannibal silence. Hannibal is across the street. He wears bandages because mm -hmm. he's across it's the street the, from the a plastic, plastic surgeon. surgeon. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, he's injecting, I guess he's stealing like silicone and injecting mm -hmm. it in his face. Because he wants to change And he's his writing face, a letter. So like, yeah. But this one is more dramatic. I kind of like this ending a little bit more. And, and also, uh, uh, <laughs> we get the presumption that uh, Chilton dies. So Yes, yes, which is pretty good. Uh, I love this movie. It's as, so good. As stated, it's one of my favorite movies. I'm hoping the show doesn't screw it up, but I really don't like that producer. Um, I don't have any hopes for it. Also, can't they not even mention Hannibal? That might be true. No. I heard that was a thing. I don't know if that's like someone just being no, dramatic. No, I think it was the opposite. I think other things couldn't mention Clarice. Like okay. The TV show couldn't mention Silence of the Lambs specifically. Okay. Uh, but anyway, really, really great movie. I kind of like this whole series. Well, not the fourth one. I kind of, <laughs> yeah, I kind of like the series. I know people are very split on Hannibal. I... We'll get to Hannibal because that's a very loaded one. Especially the book. Oh my God. Uh, but yeah, I really love this. I highly recommend it. As a, as a woman, how did this movie feel to you? Oh no, it's great. Yes. It's wonderful. I love it. I mean, again, you can't really relate because you had to rely on a man for all your success. But do you think women who have to rely on themselves can relate to it? I'm going to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this was talking about tapes. Uh, oh, check out our podcast, Castle yeah. versus the Pod Monster. <laughs> we didn't mention that in the beginning. <laughs> um, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And let's go eat some liver with fava beans and candy. Too bad. I'll drink the wine. Okay, let's go do that. Bye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talking about tapes.